Hi Miss, for our group, we present about a study on variable amount of calorie burn and distance of running. Here are our teammates for our group project. This is a study on variable amount of calorie burn where it was our dependent variable and the distance of running where it is our independent variable. Data for this research were collected on 80 runners by using SRS sampling which is simple random sampling. The study is conducted to see if the amount of calorie burn would affected by the distance of running. There are two types of variable which are qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative data in this research are continuous. The qualitative variable in this research are the gender, which is the male and female. The quantitative variable in this project include the amount of calorie burn and distance of running. In this project, numerical and graphical approach was applied. Benefits of running The more calories are burned when running farther or faster because of how important distance and speed are. Second, it will raise our heart rate and expend more energy. Running burn a lot of calories and it's a metabolic taxing workout. Lastly, running will help you to achieve your goal of losing weight. The objective in this study is to describe the quantitative and qualitative variables using graphical and numerical techniques to determine the shape of data distribution for qualitative variables to compare the dispersion of distance of running and the amount of calories burned based on gender to determine correlation between distance of running and the amount of calories burned and lastly is to predict the amount of distance of running and the amount of calories There are many benefits that we get from this study. These include knowledge in statistical area and learn to write a statistical report. Besides, we also get better understanding as many theories that we learn in this course was included in this project. This project also helped us in reading the SSPS outputs correctly as it is very hard to read it if we do not have enough knowledge about it. While doing this project, we also get to learn many new terms. Other than that, this project allows us to know the correlation between distance of running and the amount of calories burned. This will neutralize different opinions of people and strengthen the knowledge people got from research with the same study. This is because the data provided is using graphs and number, which giving the answers logically and not biased. Moreover, by doing this study also helps in strengthening the bond of our team. This is because to complete this project, all of us need to cooperate and give commitment into it. Therefore, this study has generated a great impact on us, whether physically or mentally. The purpose of this data description is to save all the information about the data sets and its information. There are three variables that include in this study, which is first, gender of the runners. It is a qualitative variable and the level of measurement is nominal. In this study, there are two quanti continuous quantitative, which is amount of calories burned and the distance of running. Both of it have the level measurement ratio. There are many types of graphs that use in this study, such as bar chart, histograms, box plot, and scatter plot. As the gender of the runners is the qualitative data, Bar chart is the most suitable to represent its data. Meanwhile, for amount of calories burned and distance of running, histogram and box plot can be used for both. Scatter plot also used in this study to observe the relationship between amount of calories burned and distance of running. The purpose of this numerical technique is to obtain a numerical solution 
for the problems where an analytical solution does not exist. To measure of central tendency, we need to calculate mean, median, and mode. While to measure of dispersion, we need to find its variance and standard deviation. To measure of position, we need to identify first, second, and third quartile. For determine the shape of data distribution, we need to find the Pearson coefficient of skewness. This numerical technique is suitable only for quantitative variable and not for qualitative variable. However, qualitative variable can still be described using frequency distribution table. There are many methods that have been used to achieve objectives in this study. To describe the quantitative and qualitative variables using graphical and numerical techniques, we can use box plot, histogram, bar chart, measures of central tendency, measures of central location, and measures of dispersion. To determine the shape of data distribution for qualitative variables, we can use Pearson coefficient of skewness to compare the dispersion of distance of running and the amount of calories burned based on gender, we can use coefficient of variation to determine correlation between distance of running and the amount of calories burned. We can use Pearson coefficient of correlation. And lastly, to predict the amount of distance of running and the amount of calories burned, we can use regression analysis. Next, we move on to Chapter 3, which is Results and Interpretations of Data. Let's start from Data Description. Figure 3.1 and Table 3.1 show bar chart and frequency distribution of runners gender in ethnic runners who are going to give different amounts of calories burned based on their distance of running. We can see that the number of runners between male and female is almost the same. The percentage of male with 51.2% are a bit higher than female with 48.8%. As for figure 3.2 until figure 3.5, they represent histogram and box plot for variable calories burn and distance of running respectively. We can see that the shape of data distribution for both variables are skewed to the right. Further analysis can be examined using Pearson coefficient of skewness in order to confirm the shape of data distribution. This will be explained in section 3.2. Next is section 3.2, which is measure of skewness. Skewness used to measure the lack of symmetry in data distribution. The highest point of a distribution is its mode. The mode marks the response of value on the x-axis that occurs with the highest probability. A distribution is skewed if the tail on one side of the mode is fatter or longer than on the other end, also known as asymmetrical. In an asymmetrical distribution, a negative skew indicates that the tail on the left side is longer on the right side, which is also known as left skewed. Conversely, a positive skew indicates that the tail on the right side is longer than on the left side, which is also known as right skewed. Asymmetric distributions occur when extra values lead to a distortion of the normal distribution. Pearson coefficient of skewness is presented in table 3.2 above. In this case, the variable calories burned is positively skewed while the variable distance of running is negatively skewed. This indicates that runners with low amount of calories burned are less than the average while runners with longer distance of running are more than the average. Apart from this, we can see that both values are closer to zero which confirm the shape of data distribution as depicted from graph that we presented in section 3. In this project, we also included coefficient of variation or also known as CV to explain more about the data. 
Coefficient version is a statistical measure of the dispersion of the data points in data set around. It is used to compare the spreads of two or more data distributions. Moreover, coefficient variation compares the standard deviation and mean for a distribution and converts the value to percent. Based on Table 2.7, the coefficient of variation of calories burn is 84%, while for distance of running is 59.61%. This depicts that the distribution of calories burn is less consistent than the distribution of distance of running. As for calories burn, female has higher coefficient of variation as compared to... Next, I will explain about descriptive statistic analysis. This study involves qualitative and quantitative variables. For qualitative variables, only limited analysis can be done which it only can be represented by graph and frequency distribution table. In contrast, with quantitative variables, more analysis can be examined using measure of central tendency, measure of dispersions, and measure of locations. Based on table 3.3, we can summarize that the longer the distance of running, the higher the amount of calories burned. Next, central tendency is a central value or a typical value for a probability distribution. It is occasionally called an average or just the center location or center of the distributions. Table 3.4 shows the average calories burn is 278.51 kilocalories, while the average for distance of running is 3.6995 kilometers. Half of the runner burn more than 241.5 kilocalories of calories, and another half burn less than 241.5 kilocalories of calories. Furthermore, half of the runner run more than 3.6452 km and another half run less than 3.6452 km. Next, measures of dispersion interpret the spread of the data. They include the range, interquartile range, standard deviations, and variance. Table 3.5 shows that the standard deviations for calories burned is 118.561, while the standard deviations for the distance of running is 1.1094. In addition, the variance for the calories burned is 14,056.709, while the variance for distance of running is 1.231. Next, central location is the center of a set of data points. Table 3.6 shows that 75% of the runner burn less than 213 kilocalories of calories and 25% burn more than 213 kilocalories of calories. The third quartile of calories burn mean 25% of the runner burn less than 371.5 kilocalories and 75% burn more than 371.5 kilocalories. The first quartile of distance of running means 75% of the runner run more than 3.1422 km and 25% run less than 3.1422 km. Moreover, the third quartile of distance of running means that 25% of the runner runs more than 4.4136 km and 75% run less than 4.413 Move to the next, which is correlations and regression analysis. Correlation analysis is a statistical method that is used to discover if there is a relationship between two variables that are usually known as independent variables and dependent variables. Moreover, correlations is very functional because it helps to make assumptions or predictions about the future behavior from it. There are three methods that can be used, such as scatter diagram, Secondly is Pearson product moment coefficients of correlations and lastly is Pearman rank coefficients of correlation for qualitative and quantitative variable. Regression analysis is another statistical method to estimate the best fitted line to present the relationship between dependent and independent variables. Figure 3.6 above shows the scattered plot of distance of running and amount of calories burned. There is a strong positive correlation distance of running and the amount of calories burned. 
Based on table 3.8, the Pearson correlation from the SPSS output above is 0.828. This shows that there is a strong positive correlation between amount of calories burned and distance of running. From table 3.9, the value A, or known as y-intercept, is negative 48.827, meaning that it is not proper to interpret value A because there is no negative distance. The slope from SPSS is 88.483, meaning that for every 1 km increase in distance of running, the amount of calories burned will increase by 88.483 kilocalories. So, the complete regression equation is y equal negative 48.827 plus 88.483x. The predictions of amount of calories burned if the runner run for 2.9 km is 207.77 kilocalories. Lastly, coefficients of determination from the SSPS output is 0 0.686 that are equal to 69%. 69% of total calories burned can be explained by distance of running using the regression. In conclusion, what we have learned from this course throughout Chapter 1 until Chapter 3 is that we could do more than just collecting data. From collecting data, we will make various charts looking at our collected data. Every chart is done to display more appealing data and explore more about the info itself. Every chart differ and offer a particular insight supporting what we would like to seek out. Additionally, supported by the graph, we are able to know the pattern and relationship between the variable x and y. During this study, we also use statistical analysis method to interpret the information like the mean, variance, and quartiles. Lastly, the correlations help us to understand the strengths of relationship between two variables in a very large data set while multivariate analysis is employed to explain the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable. Congratulations! And welcome to group 2 presentation. Our group title for this assignment is a study on variables H and systolic blood pressure. This is our group member. Dayan Nur Afika, Amir Safi, Nuradwin Kairina, and lastly Aina Adriano. This is the contents of this video. Introduction, methodology, result, interpretation, conclusion, and the last one is summary. Assalamualaikum, Madam. I will present for chapter 1, which is introduction. Uh, there is three parts in this chapter, which is background of study, objective of study, and significant of study. In order to fulfill the criteria for STA-108 basic statistic and probability, we had to conduct a study to see whether there is a correlation between systolic blood pressure and age across various gender. A research on the variable systolic blood pressure and age, uh, systolic blood pressure will serve as the dependent variable in the study whereas age will serve as the, as the independent variable. The study is conducted to see if if age of person in different gender would affect the systolic blood pressure. Uh, in order to do this research, random sample or method is one in which all the people or thing involved have an equal change of being chosen. Thus, a total of 130 people of various gender and age were randomly picked to participate, to participate in the study as a result uh, 97 female and 33 men were selected. Uh, quantitative variable are a variable whose value result from counting or measuring something. Any variable where the data represent amount. Uh, qualitative variable are a variable that are not measure, measurement variable. Uh, 
uh, their value do not result from measuring or counting. Also known as categorical variable, qualitative variable are variable with no natural sense of ordering. They are therefore measured on a nominal scale. For this study, there are four different sort of variable. The data for quantitative variable is the systolic blood pressure and age of the person whereas the data for the qualitative variable is gender. Uh, the, the numerical approach were applied, was applied in this research. Uh, the objective of the study are as follows. To describe the quantitative which is systolic blood pressure and qualitative variable which is gender using graphical and numerical uh, technique. To determine the shape of distribution of sy for systolic blood pressure, to compare the dispersion of systolic blood pressure based on gender, to determine the correlation between age of person and systolic blood pressure, uh, to predict systolic blood pressure based on age of person, and to determine the accuracy of prediction of systolic blood pressure based on age of person. Several advantages come from doing this study, including the improvement of statistical knowledge using SPP, SPSS. We, ha we have learned how to create a statistical report thanks to this research as well. In addition, applying the concept we learned in class to our own project has helped us better understand what we, we have learned in class. Together with our student, we conducted the investigation to better comprehend several topics including health and applied science. And to get some finding, uh, furthermore, this study is important for our future pro profession because we are doing an applied science, si applied science course. It means that if we continue, doing, continue studying this topic, we will take part in additional research. Those invest investigation must be supported by documentation and statistics Practically presented for greater comprehension. The study offers some guidance on how to do effectively and systematically as a consequence. In methodology, I will explain about data description, what is graphical method, what is numerical method, and methods to achieve. Data description. Data collection, organization, description, and analysis are all part of statistics. Data can refer to measurements that have been seen and gathered from various sources through study. Data collection is done in accordance with the objective of the research. Brief descriptive coefficients known as descriptive statistics are used to sum up a specific data set which may be a sample of a population or a representation of the complete population. Descriptive statistics are used to transform complex quantitative insights from a huge data set into concise explanations. In this case study, the secondary data is used to conduct statistical analysis. The data set in this study consists of one qualitative variable and two quantitative variables. The description of the data for this study is the age and the systolic blood pressure of 130 person. Table 2.1 summarizes the data description. The data for this analysis was found at StarCrunch website. There are three variables in this research. First, gender. Second, edge of passion. Three, systolic blood pressure. Gender is qualitative data. Meanwhile, edge of passion and systolic blood pressure are continuous quantitative variable. For qualitative variable, a sort of graph called a bar chart is used to convey qualitative data. This graph displays the relative sizes of the categories being measured using vertical and horizontal bars. In this case study, the systolic blood pressure based on the gender can be readily distinguished by the frequency of its appearance. Age and systolic blood pressure can be shown as histograms and box plots for quantitative variables. This is because histograms are yet another way for displaying frequency distributions. It is a bar chart, 
However, there are significant distinctions between them. The histogram divides variable values into equal sized intervals. The frequency of each interval is varied. Box plots, on the other hand, are a great way to visually identify the shape of a data distribution. Next, numerical technique. Quantitative variables have also been described using numerical techniques in addition to the graphical method. The most often used numerical measurements for quantitative data are the mean, median, mod percentiles, range, variance, and standard deviation. In a numerical approach, the mean, median, and mod are measures of central tendency. The variability or a sample of population is described by a measure of dispersion. A rank ordered data collection is divided into four equal halves by quartiles to determine position. Each value of a section split is referred to as a first quartile Q1, second quartile Q2, and third quartile Q3. The coefficient of skewness determines the form of the data distribution. A positive skew indicates that the data is being pulled to the right, while a negative skew indicates that the data is being dragged to the left. The distribution is normal if the skewness is symmetric. The techniques used for this study are shown in the table 2.3. Qualitative variables should not be described using numerical approaches such as those in table 2.3. To describe qualitative variables, a frequency distribution table is still used. In the quantitative variable in table 2.2, H is specified as an independent variable, while systolic blood pressure is set as a dependent variable. A scatter plot and the Pearson coefficient of correlation are used to determine the relationship between age and systolic blood pressure. Regression analysis is also done on this data to find the best fitting regression line. Last part in methodology is method used to achieve objectives. The table lists the aims and techniques utilized to achieve them. To describe the quantitative variables, we can use bar chart, box plot, histogram, measures of te central tendency, measures of central location, measures of dispersion, and measure of position. To determine the shape of data distribution for qualitative variable, we can use Pearson coefficient of skewness. To compare the dispersion of age of person and systolic blood pressure based on gender, we use coefficient of variation. To determine correlation between age of person and systolic blood pressure, we use Pearson coefficient of correlation. And to predict the amount of age of person and systolic blood pressure, we use regression analysis. This bar chart represents the data of the genders of the people. As we can see, there is a big difference in the amount between males and females, where males are higher in amount compared to females. They differ by 64 in frequency and 49.2 in percentage. These are the histogram and box plot for varying age. Using the Pearson coefficient of skewness, the skewness value is 0 0.579. From there, we can confirm that the form of data distribution, the shape of the variable's data distribution is positively skewed. This indicates that the participants with lower age are more than the average. From the data presented also, we know that the minimum age of the participant is 17 and the maximum is 95. This shows that the sample were randomly picked from every range of ages. Next, I will explain about the measures of central tendency. The statistical metric that identifies a single value as a representative of an entire distribution. That is the definition of central tendency. It strives to give a precise account of all the facts. It is the loan value that best typifies or reflects the information gathered. In real life situation, 
It is helpful to describe data by a single number that is most representative of an entire collection of number. The commonly used measures are mean, mood and median. The mean for the participant's age are 42.22. Mean is the average of the data values. This indicates that the average age of the participant are 47 years old. Next, the median of the participant's ages are 45. Median is the middle value of the arranged data in ascending order. So, this shows that half of the participants are older than 45 years old and another half is younger than 45 years old. Lastly, the value of mode for the age of participant is 38.07. Mode is the most frequent value that occurs in data set. This means most, most participants are around 38 years old. To proceed, I will explain about measures of dispersion. This part gives us the idea of how much number in a set differ from the mean of the set. These two measures are called the variance and the standard deviation of the set. It measures the spread of a set of observation. The more spread out or dispersed the data are, the larger the variance and standard deviation will be. Meanwhile, the more clustered the data are, the smaller the variance and standard deviation will be. If all the data values are the same, it means that there are no variation in the data. The variance and standard deviation will also be will also be equal to zero. As it shows here, the standard deviation of the age is 15.799 and the variance is 249.5597. This shows that the data are dispersed and there's a lot of variation. Not to forget the range of the participants' ages is 78. Lastly, the quotas measure dispersion associated with the medium. The first quota is defined as the middle number between the smallest number and the median of data set. The second quota is the median of the data set. The third quota is defined as the middle number between the median and the highest value of the data set. The first quartile is 36. This indicates that 25% of the participants are younger than 36 years old and 75% of, of the participants are older than 36 years old. While the third quartile is 55.25, which means 25% of the participants are older than 55 years old and 75% of the participants are younger than 55 years old. Um, these are the histogram and box plot for the participant systolic blood pressure record. Using the Pearson co coefficient of skewness, the skewness value is 0 0.565. From there, we can confirm that the from data of the distribution, the shape of the variable's data distribution is positive, positively skewed. This indicates that the participant with lower systolic blood pressure are more than the average. From the data presented also, uh, we know that the minimum systolic blood pressure reading of the participant is 90 and the maximum is 210. The mean for the participant's systolic blood pressure reading are 134.49. Mean is the average of the data values. So this indicates that the average systolic blood pressure reading for the participants are 134.49 mm mercury. Next, the median of the participant's systolic blood pressure reading are 129. Median is the middle value of the arranged data in ascending order. So, this shows that half of the participant's systolic blood pressure reading are higher than 129 mm and another half has a lower reading than 129 mm Lastly, the value of mode for the systolic blood pressure of participant is 118 0.89. Mode is the most frequent value that occurs in a data set. This means most participants' systolic blood pressure reading are 118.89 mm mercury. Next, measure of dispersion. As it shows here, the standard deviation of the systolic blood pressure reading is 27.615 and the variance is 762.577.
Compared to the data for independent variable which is age, the variance for systolic blood pressure is higher in value. The range of the participants' ages is 70, 78. Lastly, the quartiles measure dispersion. The first quartal is 110. This indicates that 25% of the participant has a lower systolic blood pressure than 110 mm mercury and 75 other participant has a higher systolic blood pressure than 110 mm mercury. While the third quartal is 150.50, which means 25% of the participant has a higher systolic blood pressure than 150 millimeter mercury and 75% of the participant has a lower systolic blood pressure than 150.5 millimeter mercury. Coefficient of variation is used to compare the dispersion of spread of variability of two or more data distribution. Coefficient of variation compares the standard deviation and mean for a distribution and converts this value to percent. For both the participant ages and systolic blood pressure, the coefficient variation for male is lower than female. This shows that the age distribution of male is more stable than female, and the systolic blood pressure distribution of male is less spread than female. This is a scatter diagram. A scatter diagram is a tool for analyzing relationship between two variables, independent variable, which is edge is plotted on the horizontal axis, while dependent variable, which is systolic blood pressure, is plotted on the vertical axis. The pattern of their intersecting points can graphically show relationship patterns. In this case, the patterns show weak positive correlation between age and systolic blood pressure. The goal of the study is to identify the and predict the relationship between the dependent and independent variable. Describe the quantitative and qualitative variable using numerical and graphical method. Identify the shape of the data distribution for the quantitative variable and compare the dispersion of the quantitative variable based on the qualitative variable. Based on the data in the study, it is shown that the age of a person affect the systolic blood pressure of a person. The data, the data collected shows that the systolic blood pressure is 210 when the person age is 95, and the lowest systolic blood pressure was on when the age of person is 17, which is 19. Next, the data had shown that even if the gender of a person is different but have the same age, the systolic blood pressure is still affected and may, di and may differ from one another. This data is important in order to measure the systolic blood pressure. Uh, based on the data, most of men having systolic blood pressure of 135.97 when their age are about 53 years old, and most females have a systolic blood pressure of 133. 133.99 when their age are about 45 years old. From the correlation and regression analysis, there is a moderate positive correlation between the systolic blood pressure and the age of person. Uh, it does not mean if the age of person increase, the systolic blood pressure is not entirely sure to be high due to the different gender and lifestyle that may affect the systolic blood pressure of the person. To conclude, we could, we could do more than merely gather data. Uh, as we have learned throughout this course from chapter 1 through chapter 3, depending on the data, data we collect, we may create a variety of charts and every chart is different and provides specific information depending on what we are trying to uncover. Thus, they are, they are made to represent a more attractive data and stud study more about the data itself. Additionally, we may deduce patterns and correlation between the variable x and y from the graph. The means, variance, and quartiles were employed in the study data analysis in order to make the data easier to understand. Last but not least, regression analysis is used to characterize the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable. That's all from our group. Thank you.
background of study. Students in the fourth semester conducted research to meet the requirement for STA 108 basic statistic and probability. The research was conducted to distinguish correlation between weight and the waist circumference of a person. In this research, weight of a person is independent variable x. This variable is recorded in kilogram kg. Meanwhile, the waist circumference is the dependent variable y and measured in centimeters cm. The study is conducted to see if the waist circumference of a person will be affected if there are any changes in the weight of a person. Data for this research were collected from 44 men and 42 women. This makes the total of our respondents equals to 86. In this research, there are two different kinds of variables. First is qualitative and second one is the quantitative. In this study, quantitative data are continuous. Gender is the qualitative variable. Gender plays a huge impact on the experiment because male's main sex hormone is a testosterone, whereas female's blood contains significant level of estrogen and progesterone, which contributes to men's tendency to be a bit heavier than women. These hormones are thought to be a major factor in controlling body weight, according to the scientists. Mental health may also affect the weight of a person. A person with mental health issue may lose weight and lose appetite are both symptoms of depression. According to the research, the mere idea of being overweight might cause sadness and raise psychological suffering. Symptoms of depression including weariness or insomnia might make losing weight more challenging. A numerical and pictorial technique was used in this project. 44 men and women were chosen using simple random sampling for this study, which employed cluster sampling, or we call it as SRS. The data was analyzed using SPS. The method used to accomplish this goal include histograms, box plot, bar chart, measure of central tendency, measure of central location, measure of dispersion, and measure of location as well as Pearson coefficient of skewness, coefficient of variation, coefficient of correlation, regression analysis, and coefficient of determination. Objectives of study. Objectives of study are as follows. There are five main objectives of the study. The first, the first one is to describe the quantitative and qualitative variables using graphical and numerical techniques. The second one is to determine the shape of data distribution for qualitative variables. The third one is to compare the dispersion, the dispersion of weight and waist circumference based on qualitative variable to determine correlation between weight and waist circumference. And the last one is to predict the amount of weight and waist circumference. Significance of study the study that was conducted has produced a number of advantages, including the acquisition of statistical information. Through the course, students have also acquired writing skills for statistics reports. As we are incorporating the theories we have learned in the course syllabus into our own project, we were also given a greater understanding. The inclusion of science in this project has improved our ability to draw conclusions from correlation between project variables. Aside from that, Study project like this one, which includes the methodology employed, may aid us in future studies in the field of science. For better understanding and to aid students in conducting research in an appropriate and methodological manner, studies must be adequately documented and statistically presented. Furthermore, during the making of this project, we were exposed on how we circumference measurement can be used to evaluate the health risk associated with obesity. If you are at a health weight, excess belly fat can raise your risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, and other conditions. Measuring your waistline is the greatest approach to determine if it raises your risk of heart disease. Other than that, this project has shown us on how important it is to take care of our body. Based on the data given, the knowledge gained during conducting research, taking care of your body means taking care of your health. This will balance out divergent viewpoints and reinforce information people have learned from the research on the same study. This is so that the research data 
which is presented in the form of graphs and numbers, may be analyzed logically and without bias. Consequently, this study has had a significant influence. Hi, my name is Nur Fatiha Muhammad Rosdi, and I am going to talk about Chapter 2, which is the methodology. It has four parts, data description, graphical techniques, numerical techniques, and lastly, methods used to achieve objectives. The purpose of data description is to gather all of the information about the data sets and the details, and with that, the data can be easy to take in and do the statistical analysis, gender, waist circumference, in CM, and weight in kg are the three fundamental components evaluated in this assessment. In this study, data set consists of one qualitative variables, which is gender, and two quantitative variables, which are waist circumference and weight. The description of the data obtained from this study is described in Table 2.1. In this study, secondary data were used in order to determine the distribution of data for each variable present by using a graphical techniques. The graphics make the data simpler and easier to understand. The type of graphs that is used for each variable is shown in Table 2.2. Because a bar chart is a form of graph that is designed to convey information that is not numerical, that is why we chose it for qualitative data. This kind of graph emphasizes the relative sizes, the categories being measured using vertical or horizontal bars. For this assessment, the gender's frequency of present may be plainly shown. The person's weight and waist circumference, which are quantitative data, can be represented as histogram or box plot. This is due to the fact that a histogram is another method for displaying the wide variety of a quantitative variable. When working with endless volumes of data, histograms are highly useful. A histogram divides variables values into equal size intervals. However, box plots are great at displaying variation within distribution. The main purpose of numerical analysis is to design and test methods for providing incomplete but accurate answer to important problems. There are two main variables to consider when numerical approaches are used instead of analytical ones. Thus, to analyze the characteristic of each quantitative variables, numerical methods have been used in addition to graphical techniques. Table 2.3 describes the techniques applied. In order to achieve objectives of this study, the method used in this study is listed in Table 2.4. This section shown data presentation as described in Table 2.2 and Table 2.3 for each of the variables involved in this study. Figure 3.1 and Table 3.1 above depict that bottom bar chart and frequency distributions of respondents gender. We can see that number of respondents of male is a little bit higher with 44% than the number of female respondents which is 42%. Figure 3.2 and Figure 3.3 represent histogram and box plot for variable weight, respectively, while Figure 3.4 and Figure 3.5 represent histogram and box plot for variable weight circumference. We can see that the shape of data distribution for this variable is a bit positively skewed. Further analysis can be examined using Pearson coefficients of skewness in order to confirm the shape of data distribution. This will be expanded in Section 3.2.
Skewness is a measure of symmetry, or more precisely, the absence of symmetry. If the distribution or data set is symmetric, it will appear the same to the left and right of the center point. There could be a left or right skewed distribution. To identify the directions and relative sides of a distribution's star histogram, box plot, box plot and stem and plot, this part will present Pearson coefficients of skewness for both variables in order to determine the skewness. Pearson coefficients of skewness is presented in table 3.2 above. In this case, both variables are positively skewed. This indicates that respondents with heavier weight are more than the average. Apart from this, we can see that both values are closer to zero, which confer with shape of data distributions as depicted from the graph that we presented in section 3.1. Table 3.3 above shows that the lowest weight for among the person is 42 kg, while the highest weight is 164 kg. For weight circumference, the shortest value for the person is 62 cm, and the longest value is 148 cm. This data shows that the greater the weight of a person, the longer the weight circumference will be. Center WC can be defined as a descriptive summary of a data set in a single value that reflects the center of the data distributions. It consists of three measurements that include mean, median, and mod. Mean is the total of all values in a data set and then divided with the total number of values. For median, it is a median value in a data set which is arranged in ascending order to determine median value. Definition for the mod is that value that most frequently occur in a data set. Table 3.4 shows that the summary statistics for measure of center tendency on this research. In this table, we can identify that the average for the weight is 76.3 at kg, while the average for the weight circumference shows the value of 90.05 cm. In addition, the median for variable weight is 73.7 kg, and the research also recorded that the median for weight circumference is 86.8 cm. Besides, most of them having weight of 54 kg, and the majority of the person having weight circumference with a value of 70 cm. Hi, my name is Immanuel Pomi and Robert, so I would like to present about our research for STA108. Measure of central location has three different quartiles. It consists of first quartile, second quartile, and third quartile. The first quartile refers to the middle value that located between the smallest number and the median of the data set. Second quartile also can be called as a median. And third quartile is the middle value lying between the median and the greatest value. As we refer to the table, the first quartile for weight and weight circumference is 60.13 kg and 77.22 cm respectively. Furthermore, the weight and the weight circumference in the second quartile are 73.70 kg and 86.20 cm respectively. Apart from that, the third quartile for weight and weight circumference is 85.73 kilogram and 98.15 cm respectively. Next, coefficient of variation, also known as relative standard deviation, refers standardized measurement of dispersion of a probability or frequency distribution. The formula can be expressed as standard deviation divided by means times 100. The table shows that the male has a coefficient of variation for weight of 29.47%, which is greater than a female, who has a coefficient of variation for weight of 27.86%. However, the coefficient of variance for male weight circumference is 19%, which is less than the coefficient of variation for female weight circumference, which is 19.56%. Correlation analysis is a statistical technique for determining the relationship and strength of two variables, known as the independent variable and the dependent variable. Another statistical technique is regression analysis, which finds the line that best fits the connection between the independent and independent variables. The formula can be expressed as y equal to a plus bx, where a is the y-intercept B is the slope of the line and X indicates the independent variable. In this slide, the scatter plot 
prove that uh, there is strong positive correlation between waist circumference and wake. From this table, we can determine the Pearson's correlation for this study is 0 0.926. This illustrates that there is strong positive correlation between waist circumference and weight as I mentioned earlier. We can see from coefficient tables that the value of the y-intercept is 36.773, meaning that the waist circumference will be 36.773 cm when the weight is 0 kg. Additionally, the slope from the SPSS output is 0 0.698. According to these statistics, the waist circumference increased by 0.698 cm for every 1 kg increase in weight. The Hall regression equation is y equal to 36.773 plus 0.698x. So, what is the waist circumference if the weight of a person is 58 kg? To solve this question, we need to insert 58 kg into the x in the regression equation. Thus, the answer will be 77.257 cm. That's all from me. Thank you. Report summary. The goal of this study is to identify and predict the relationship between the dependent and independent variable. Describe the quantitative and qualitative variables using numerical and graphical methods. Identify the shape of the data distribution for the quantitative variables and compare the dis dispersion and quantitative variables based on the qualitative variables. Despite that, the main objective of this project is to determine the correlation between weight and waist circumference. The research employed several methodologies, including graphical and numerical tools, and SPSS was utilized to evaluate the data. In Chapter 2, the descriptions are used to condense a large amount of information into a brief overview. For this assignment, it was necessary to use a graphical way to examine the distribution of data for each variable. For the quantitative variable, we utilized a histogram and box plot. Which for the qualitative variable, we used a bar chart. The mean and median and mode of a numerical value distribution are measurements of central tendency that aid in problem solving. This also considers the coefficient of skewness, a metric for asymmetry in the distribution that impacts how data are distributed. For position measurement, quartiles divide a set of rank ordered data for equal portions. Numerous techniques were utilized in Chapter 3 to gather and analyze data. Using SPSS output, we can interpret our data, the aforementioned SPSS outputs, Pearson, correlation show that 0 0.6. 9.8. This indicates that there is a moderate positive correlation weight and waist circumference. Coefficient of determination from SPS output is 0 0.858, which is equivalent to 85.8%. According to the regression equation, the value of weight can account for 85.8% of total waist circumference. To find the coefficient of variation, we must divide the standard deviation by the mean and multiply the result by 100 to determine the coefficient of variation. If the distribution of example A's coefficient is higher than distribution of example B's coefficient variation, we can infer that distribution B is more consistent than distribution A. More, persist more consistency is implied by less relative variation than by bigger relative variation. In a nutshell, all these methods are very useful for us as it helped us to determine the statistic of a research and is the work for interpreting the data. Assalamualaikum and hi, I'm Nusra Izati binti Shafir Fauzi from AS1204B and I'm one of group 4 members. So today I'm going to talk about the introduction for our study. So first of all, for this study, the students were required to conduct research for the second assessment that was assigned in the course code STA108, which is Statistic and Probability. The focus of this research is to investigate the relationship between the age groups of people and the number of cups of caffeine consumed by them. 
Overall, the study is conducted to determine if the number of cups of caffeine consumed would be different with the age of a person. With that, data were collected on 187 people from the age group of 0, which is newborn, until 8 years old. Um, by common finding, caffeine would be most likely to be consumed by adults instead of children, but with the study, it may change. Besides the two variables, there is one more variable to be considered, which is the gender of each person, it to be male or female. In the study, two types of variables are present, which are qualitative and quantitative variable. Um, quantitative data in, in this um, research are discrete, which refers to the age group and the number of cup of caffeine consumed. On the other hand, qualitative uh, data in this study is gender, which are female and male. According to another study by scientists, percentage of caffeine consumed by female was higher than male as females uh, were the category that take coffee or tea more than males did. Nevertheless, despite the gender of a person is being considered, the focus in this research is between the number of cup of caffeine consumed and age of a person. So the objective of our study, the first one, to use graphical and numerical techniques in describing qualitative element and quantitative elements, to identify the quantitative variable data distribution shape, to differentiate the dispersion of variables age and number of cups of caffeine consumed based on quant uh, qualitative variable, to establish a relationship between the variables age and number of cups of caffeine consumed, to predict number of cups of caffeine consumed based on age of a person, and lastly, to determine accuracy of fit of regression and equation. So the significance of our study are, basically there are several perks obtained by conducting this study, including the knowledge of using SPSS software, students have learned to write statistical reports and throughout the study, students were also provided with a better understanding in applying knowledge that has been taught, um, the involvement of social studies in the project helped us to make a better conclusion, and furthermore, research that is already documented and presented statistically like this may help in future studies by other people and can help people to understand better in a systematic and proper way. Moreover, this study allows people to know more about the correlation between variable age and number of cups of caffeine consumed. Thus, people of all age are aware of the advantage and disadvantage in consuming a certain level of caffeine. This study generated a great impact for our society since we um, prepare data and graph for our society to see better the message that we try to share in the statistical method. Now let us talk about methodology. So for starter, for data description, a secondary data was used in the study to create a statistical analysis with one qualitative and two quantitative variables. So we used 187 data sets and from a source from a, an, from a source of from internet to help us in viewing the side effects of consuming caffeine in all sets of ages. So based on the table 2.1 data description for variable we have three variable age of person and number of cups of caffeine consumed which is a quantitative variable and this in this case uh, it is a discrete quantitative type of data with the level of measurement ratio and then gender is the qualitative variables and the level of measurement for gender is nominal for graphical technique qualitative variable which is gender we use bar chart graph Meanwhile, quantitative variable, which is num which are number of cups of caffeine consumed and age of a person, for both of these variable, we use box plots and histogram. So the reason to use bar chart for qualitative variable is to express information that is not numerical and is about a trait and attribute. And in this study, the gender can be observed clearly is frequency of presence. And then the re reason to use histogram and box plot for quantitative is because histogram is very effective when dealing with a huge amount of data and then box plots mean at the same time are excellent for illustration variations within distributions. Numerical technique 
For table 2.3, it is more appropriate for quantitative variable as frequency distribution table will be suitable to explain the qualitative variable. So to offer an overall description of a collection of data, numerical value distribution is generally used in a conjunction with a measure of central tendency, such as the mean, median, mode where we can obtain variance and standard deviation also so for measure of a position a rank order data collection is divided into four equal portions by quartiles so the values that split each section are referred to as the first second and third quartiles and are indicated by the letters q1 q2 and q3 accordingly and then the shape of data distribution is determined by the coefficient of skewness it is a measure of distributions asymmetry whereas a positive skew implies that the tail is longer to the right whereas a negative skew suggests that the tail is longer to the left the skew of a completely symmetric distribution such as normal distribution is zero so for table 2.4 method used to achieve objective so uh, the, for the first objective to use graphical and numerical techniques in describing quantitative elements which are edge of a person and number of cups of caffeine consumed and the qualitative element which is gender bar chart boss plot histogram measures of central tendency measures of central location and measures of dispersion method are being used and then to identify the quantitative variables that are distribution shape Pearson coefficient of skewness is being used and to differentiate the dispersion of variables age and number of cups of caffeine consumed based on qualitative variables coefficient of variation is being used and then to establish a relationship between the variables age and number of cups of caffeine consumed Pearson coefficient of correlation is being used and then to predict number of cups of caffeine consumed based on the age of a person regression of analysis being used and then the last one is to determine the accuracy of fit of the regression equation coefficient of determination is being used now moving on to the chapter 3 for the data interpretation so for the first one data description qualitative variables we can see here that figure 3.1 and table 3.1 above shows that the bar chart and the frequency distribution of the gender in 187 persons we can see that the percentage of males is 48.1 percent are lower than females with 51.9 percent so for the quantitative variables on the other hand we can see here there's a, a figure 3.3 uh, figure 3.2 until figure 3.5 that represent the histogram and box plots for variables age of a person and number of cups of caffeine consumed respectively so the shape of data distribution for the number of cups of caffeine consumed is skewed to the right while the data distribution for age of a person is skewed to the left so further analysis can be examined using Pearson coefficient of skewness in order to confirm the shape of data distribution so this will be explained in section 3.2 measure of skewness for the next person Hello everyone, my name is Ikwan Shafifi Wintua. As for today, I would like to present my part which is the measure of skewness. Table shows the statistic of skewness which is the Pearson coefficient of skewness. In this case, variable age of a person and variable number of cups of caffeine consumed are both positively uh, skewed. This shows that younger age group consume more, than, uh, more caffeine than the older age group. Besides that, number of cups of caffeine consumed are approximately between the range of 1 to 4 cups per person. Apart from that, we can see that the values are more than zero which confirm with share of data distribution as depicted from graphs that we presented in section 3.1. Next, I'm going to talk about the descriptive statistics analysis. In, in table 3.3, which showed the summary of the descriptive statistics. It stated that the minimum age of a person in here is 13 years old, whereas the maximum of it is 72 years old. Meanwhile, as, of, as the number of cups of caffeine consumed, it shows that 0 cup is the minimum number and 12 cups is the maximum value. From this, it indicates the youngest age of a person 
to consume caffeine is 13 years old and the oldest is 72 years old while for the number of cups consumed on the other hand is 0 cups and the most is 12 cups as for table 3.4 summary statistic for measures of central tendency this this table shows the statistic of measure of central tendency in this study based on the table the average of age of a person is 39.51 years old while the average number of cup of caffeine consumed is 3.16 cups and the median age of the person in this study is 37 years old and the median age of the number of cups consumed are 2 cups besides that most of 28 years old people consume caffeine in this study whereas 2 cups are the highest number of cups of caffeine consumed next i'm going to talk about table 3.5 which is shown summary statistic for measures of dispersion this appears that the standard deviation for age of a person is 12.668 meanwhile for the number of cup of caffeine consumed is 2.49 2.459 the variance of age of a person and number of cups consumed are 160.466 and 6.046 respectively based on this data it indicates that the age of the person has a high standard deviation that resulted with the wide range of values which in this data is 59 for the number of cup of caffeine consumed the standard deviation is low as the value is close to the mean resulting with low range which is 12. next i'm going to talk about the table 3.6 which is the summary statistic for measures of central location there are three types of central location which is first quartile second quartile and third quartile which indicates the 25 percent 50 percent and the 75 percent of it in this table we know that the variable age of a person for the first quarter is 28 then the second quarter is 37 and the third quarter is 53 as for the number of cup of caffeine the first quarter is 2 and the second quarter is 2 and the third quarter is 4 next i'm going to talk about the coefficient of variation cv the table 3.7 shows that the coefficient of variation the coefficient of variation of male is 33.6 percent while it is 29.551 percent for the female the value of coefficient of variation of male is greater than the female based on the age variable this concludes that the distribution of male is more consistent than female in this variable well, as for the number of cup variable, the coefficient of variation of male is 76.11% while it is 80.54% for female. The value of coefficient of variation in male were compared to the value of female based on the number of cup variables. This concludes that distribution of female is more consistent compared to male in number of cup variable. Next, I'm going to talk about the correlation and regression analysis. Correlation analysis is the stati statistical technique used to measure the relation and strength of relationship between two variables. Figure 3.4 shows the scatter plot of number of cups and edge. There is a strong positive correlation for number of cups and edge. The two table above shows the model summary and coefficients based on the SPSS output the Pearson the Pearson uh, correlation from the SPSS output above is 0 0.282 this means that there is a strong positive correlation between number of cups and age of person y is the number of cups which is the dependent variable x is the age which is the independent variable the Symbol A is a constant, which is the y-intercept, and the symbol B is the slope. So, the linear regression line has an equation of y equal to a plus bx. So, the complete regression equation is y equal to 0 0.9935 plus 0 0.055x. 
So for the last part, which is the conclusion, the main focus of the study was to determine the relationship between the number of cups and the age of a person. It was to know if any changes in the age of a person will affect the number of cups of caffeine consumed. So for chapter 2, descriptive statistics let us reasonably reduce large amounts of information of the number of cups of caffeine consumed and age in both gender into a brief overview. A graphical method was required for this project to analyze data distribution for each variable. It involved histogram and box plot for a quantitative variable, while for qualitative variable, we use bar chart. A numerical value distributions, mean, median, and mode are measures of central tendency that help to assist in solving the problems. This also include the coefficient of skewness. A rank order data set is split into four equal parts by quartiles for position measurement. And then in chapter 3, varieties of ways or method were used to gain and interpret data value. As for example, is coefficient of variation. To find coefficient of variation, we need to divide them standard uh, deviation with a mean and multiply with 100. If coefficient variation of distribution of example A is greater than B, we can say and conclude that distribution of B is more consistent than distribution A. A larger relative variation implies less consistency, while um, smaller relative variation implies more consistency. We also use SPSS software to interpret our data. The percent correlation from the SPSS output above is 0 0.282. This means that there is a moderate positive correlation number of cups of caffeine consumed and age of a person. So to conclude, all of the method that has been used make our project easier and save a lot of our time. All the methods are re reliable for us or anyone to interpret and gain data qualitatively and quantitatively.